Oh, hey awesome beings. This is my oh lord how update that covers timing, mistakes, falling in love, doing up boats, blah, all, all the things. So it's been a little while between drinks, as they say, maybe a little while between sales. And I I kind of combine my world by by doing stuff for work and for money that's like outdoor based and also I do stuff online which is sexuality based so it's where my two worlds kind of combine it's I love being connected with nature and sharing that with other people and then I also love being connected with myself as like a sensual sexual being because I believe there's so much that we still need to learn about ourselves and there's still so much like shame and yuckiness around it that it really needs to Chuff, 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 go. So I actually was lucky enough to go and do some work with um, Indigenous RAN program down in Victoria. So I went to the peninsula. I've also been to Tasmania. I on just in like an adventure. I'd never been there before. I also have fallen in love and have an amazing new lover in my life. And of course, all that comes with that, both the gloriness and the challenges and I've kind of come back and then really been like, I still so badly want this boat thing. So using my other chunks of time to do up the boat. They put her mast up the other day, which is great. So her mast can go up. They then took it down because she still needs new halyards and we need to do the electrics for it. And I have gone through and spent the last couple of times that I've been there just painting her and cleaning her. I swear that like every time I clean one section, I find another hatch or something. It's like, oh shit (laughs) you have to clean it out and painting it and even that whole world of painting right like I thought you just paint it I mean I love to use watercolor paint obviously you can't paint a boat with watercolor paint obviously it would just like go soggy but like learning the difference between water-based paints and oil-based paints I ended up going with the two-pack paint mainly because it sounded like the wrapper from the 90s two-pack (laughs) but that still seal it which includes like undercoats and then two coats of going on top and I've been so grateful for the people who are starting to get on board and helping me my brother came and visited the other day I had some friends come and say hi it's just been so lovely to get the support and that's one thing though that I've learned I have to let go of is this timing piece of how do I know things are going to work out or my to-do list. Obviously, it makes sense to do some things before others. But, you know, she really needs everything new. Like, well, an engine that has to be repaired, (laughs) electrics, plumbing, uh, ropes, rigging, like it's all there. And I had a little bit of a meltdown the other day because I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like I was so overwhelmed by everything that needed to get done. And it really reminded me that I'm really on the beginning side, like or the very starting point of this learning process. And as adults, it feels like we are so used to just being in our comfort zone and we stick to what we know. So we don't have to feel that uncomfortable sensation of genuinely not knowing, making mistakes, learning by doing, having that vulnerability to kind of voice like, I don't actually know what that word means. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what a transducer is. I don't know what a two-pack paint is. I didn't even know that I needed marine carpet. Like, I mean, it makes sense. All these things make sense afterwards, but being gentle on myself has been an interesting process. And I wonder where you have wanted to try something new or embrace something. And just that idea of having to start right at the beginning is really overwhelming because my whole body, it was it was a lot. So she's we've got new halyards for her, which is great. They're ordered. I've been going through and painting her. And then the electrics. So I'm up to the electrics. I'm so grateful that I have a friend who works there who does electrics and was really talking me through how to do things. And it was cool because I have to calculate my load is the term. And that means that I have to figure out how much power I need to determine what kind of solar panels I need. And that's really cool. It makes me really acknowledge and identify how much I am consuming, whether it be charging my phone, my laptop, whether I want an overhead light, do I want a fan, have I got the radio, like all of these things. I really love that it's making me conscious and aware of what am I taking? 
what does it actually make for me to sustain and what does that look like and what is the process of making sure I can meet those needs and desires because I love camping don't get me wrong and I love very simple living it's also like you know what like some power to like power the toilet to churn all your poo and your toilet paper before it spits it out would be a lovely luxury that I might like or to have lights on I mean I love candles but to have a light on an auto helm which helps steer the boat like that takes power so just really having to go through meticulously and figure these things out so that has been really fun one of the things I've also noticed is that like other things are swirling around in my life as well as you know, as the boat kind of takes one step in front of the other and just noticing how how I hold, do I hold my course when it comes to the boat, you know, falling in love and having these new relationships in my life. It makes me want to, like, sometimes it, there's a strong wind, right? And you're keeling over, you're like, oh, or you change direction. Well, you've got someone else on board now who might want to go in a different direction. So really acknowledging that for myself of like, is this, is this really want, what I want? Uh, am I open to alternatives to it, to changing course, to going to new destinations? Am I open to sharing this experience with someone else? Like there's so much where I have gone from such a codependency, meaning that like I pretty much didn't realise my own needs or wants and wouldn't back them. I would just live them vicariously through another person. And so my pendulum has swung and I've come from kind of codependency now to like almost sometimes hyper independence, which is also a strategy for safety, but like to kind of come back to somewhere in the middle. And because I love being in relationships of all different kinds with people and I love collaborating with people and I love talking and communicating with people. And I also love knowing there's something that I want to do that I want to birth out into the world. And will I back that? having that centre focus and also knowing that life is not linear. (laughs) Boats aren't linear. Life isn't linear. Timing is a made-up thing to really just, it brings my focus in of like, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Because otherwise it's just too overwhelming. What is the next step? What is the next step? And there's a fun thing about the next step that I had was I was like, you know what? I really want to share this journey with people and I think it's exciting and I think that a essentially the metaphor kind of behind it is like what is something that you really want to do in your life that you feel like you're scared that you don't know how to do it and how do you work towards that and overcome all the things and kind of become this next version of you and you may not want to sail to Lord Howe Island maybe you might want to I don't know but so knowing it's different for everyone it's more just the the undercurrent more like the algorithm (laughs) and I was like, yes, I want to do the same thing. Yes, I want to live simply. Yes, I want to have this freedom. Yes, I want to learn. Yes, I want to push myself. And then what else? And I realized there's this such big part of me that sometimes I don't share, which has been so transformational, is me understanding my own sexual development, me as a sensual sexual being. And I was like, what if I get those two worlds and combine them together? Because there is something within the sailing that I feel like you come into your senses, you come into your body, I come into the moment, which is so beautiful. And then also, like, how do I do that? What is the relationship with my body, with my senses, with how I walk through the world and how I express myself and my sensuality and and just being me and all the things that are like taboo or shamed upon, like, you know, parts of my body, like don't show your nipples on Instagram or if you're a girl, you know, that's not okay. It's like, well, why isn't okay? Tell me more. Like I want to understand more about myself. When I really felt into it, came through of I want to sail around and go to amazing places using nature, being like symbiotically with nature. <laughs> Well, I mean, which we are kind of always, but very connected. And then I want to go and I want to speak at schools and I want to speak to groups about what it means to be a sexual being, to really widen what we currently have in our curriculum around sexual education. And I broke it down to three things of respect, consent and pleasure. I'm going to talk about more of those in another video. But I was like, yes, imagine, I just think of me sailing around the world doing that and talking about this thing, about connecting with your body, self-love, self-respect, how you share that with yourself, how you share that with other people. Because I feel like at the moment 
like I said, there's so much shame and there's push to the shadows and we don't talk about it. And when that happens with anything, it just comes out in real budged up ways because there is still stuff happening. There is still sexual abuse happening. There's all of these things. And it's like it's not going to change unless we talk about it and empower ourselves to know what it means to be have a healthy relationship with ourselves and with other people. And I know for a lot of people that will be starting right at the beginning of the learning process. And I really want to embrace that with gentleness and love and open-heartedness. And I also created a GoFundMe page with it too because it feels really vulnerable actually because it is something I'm working towards and I would love the support and, you know, to create this boat that I love and, and feels more and more in integrity and how I would like to live in the world and then also to be able to go around and spread and contribute information that is so important. So if you do feel like you like supporting other people on their ventures of doing that or there's something about me that resonates with you, then I would love if you supported. I'll put, like, the thing in the link um, if you want to have a look at it. And if you don't want to, then don't worry about it. I hope you still enjoy the journey because that's one of the things that is so important to me. So that's my quick little updates. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm going to get back onto making these uh, every couple of weeks to keep you updated. And, of course, I also have, like, Instagram as well and Facebook if you want to follow me or join those. What I'm actually planning on doing is Kay Cotty, if you've watched one of my previous videos, videos a woman who first circumnavigated the world solo, first woman too. Uh, she's doing like a fundraiser and you can do like a wine and dine and you can talk to her. So conveniently, she like literally lives in the next like little suburb over. So I'm hopefully going to talk to her, get inspired. Anyways, I'd love to have you come along and I hope you're having an awesome time. So bye.